also acknowledge the Indigenous owners of the land on which we meet today. Can I acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging? Can I acknowledge also anyone who is serving with our Defence Forces, or indeed has, and, and thank them very much for the service that they have rendered to their country. Can I acknowledge, of course, that my many candidates who are here with me today, and it's wonderful to have you with me, and I think you've been able to see the tremendous diversity uh, that we have in the wonderful team that we're presenting here at the next federal election. Can I, of course, acknowledge Dr Lee, good friend, um, and a great member of Parramatta, a great Liberal member. <laughs> Alex Walk and Ben Morton, my ministerial colleagues, who are here with me today. And can I particularly acknowledge Maria Kavasi, who I think, and I hope you think, would be a great federal member. <laughs> Thank you very much for your, um, your welcome here today as President of the New South Wales Chapter to all the organising uh, committee members who are here and uh, worked so well for this Hindu Council. Can I thank you for those who have brought this event together? It's important. It's important to have the opportunity. It's important to have the opportunity for us to discuss with you the important issues for you and your community as we go forward to this next federal election. It was only a few weeks ago, if that, where here, not far with Maria and Alex, I was at Paramount Park and we were there for Eid. Uh, a few days before that, I was in Cobra with Jenny, who joins me today, and she's very pleased to be here with me today, where we were there for Greek Orthodox Easter in the midnight service. Jeff was there, I think, that night as well. Prior to that, I was with my dear and good friend Josh Frydenberg in Melbourne at a local synagogue there for Passover. And of course, on Good Friday, on Easter Sunday, of course, Jenny and I were at our own church, but on Good Friday at a Chinese Baptist church in Melbourne. That's Australia. That's Australia. Many backgrounds, many stories, all coming together. And today, here with you, and earlier today, um, at a Sikh community in Melbourne. That is Australia. And particularly increasingly so, from my time as Immigration Minister, and Alex, now, we have seen the number of those who have come to make Australia their home from India year on year on year. Simon Kennedy knows all about that as our candidate for federal, as do all of my candidates here, as we've seen our Indian and, and uh, Sri Lankan communities, in Pakistani communities, grow and develop and uh, strengthen. And I must say to you, first of all, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for the amazing work that you've done in your own community in supporting each other, but not only each other, but how you've reached out to the broader Paramount community here particularly, in how you've supported your fellow Australians come through this very difficult time of the pandemic. We have seen the best of Australia over this period of time, and I must say we've seen the best of multicultural Australia over this period of time. As people from so many different faiths, so many different ethnic backgrounds, so many different nationalities and language groups, put all of that aside. And from within their own communities, reach out to each other. And no more, nowhere, I should say, is that more apparent than here in this wonderful city of Parramatta, one of our oldest cities, in fact, the second oldest city in the country. And when you look at it today, and we think back and when you drive around Parramatta and you see some of the old buildings that were here from hundreds of years ago, you just think for a moment how they might have imagined the city of Parramatta today and what it has become and how strong it is and how people have come from so many different places to make this their home and to build this thriving city, which we all know now is the centre of Sydney. We all know that. The centre of Sydney here in Parramatta. It's wonderful 
to be here to speak to you this year when India celebrates the 75th anniversary of independence. 700,000 people of Indian descent call Australia home. That's one in 35 Australians. That has changed a great deal during the time that I have been in Parliament, let alone from when I was a boy. Two-way trade between our countries now stands at over 24.3 billion. close to some 90,000 students studying, Indian students studying in Australia. And I'm pleased that 25,000 Indian students have arrived since we reopened our borders, uh, joining those already here when we opened them up in November of last year. And welcome back. <laughs> and Alex tells me, 150,000 visas have been issued to visit Australia since November. Family We are moving past the pandemic as much as the world is. But here in Australia, this means so much, I think, for our multicultural community because while we were all kept in for that period of time, I know how hard it has been for our multicultural communities across Australia who were cut off from their families, who were cut off from their loved ones and their friends many of whom were back in their original country. But now, the doors are open, the borders are open, and everybody can be reunited again. And you can go and visit and you can return. And your friends and your family can come. And you can be together once more. Matri is a word that I've learned. It's the Indian word for matri, which we all know about here in Australia. It means deep friendship. And you know, it is. <laughs> deep friendship is based on many things. And one of the things I think more important than any other is it's based on shared values. We can be very different. We can look very different. But when we share the same values, then the potential for matri is very bright and for that deep friendship. And that is indeed what we enjoy between Australia and India. At Gallipoli, pardon me, at Gallipoli, there were 5,000 Indians who served alongside Australians. 5,000. And 12 actually joined the AIF. And there's now a memorial in Cherrybrook to them to honour their service. And it and in El Alamein. We have a natural affinity when it comes to language and democracy, a belief in institutions and culture, expressed most recently following the passing of our great cricketer Shane Warne. And we even share a national day together on the 26th of January. We share an ocean at the epicentre of where the world is today in our Indo-Pacific and at the most successful multi, as the most successful multicultural and multi-nation faith, multi-faith nation I should say on earth, we understand something that my dear friend Narendra Modi has said, the world is one family. time, and I hope you don't mind me referring to Mr. Andrew, because we do refer to him. He calls me ScoMo too, by the way. <laughs> when we get together, it's ScoMo. <laughs> we could have called the free trade agreement the ScoMo deal. <laughs> but we tease each other, like friends do. Oh, the ScoMo, sir. <laughs> We share stories together as friends. We enjoy each other's company. He has a delightful sense of humour. A delightful sense of humour. He's a great leader. He's someone who... He's someone who understands the 
the important role that India is playing right now in the world today, and he's someone who deeply understands the friendship with Australia and values it deeply, and I feel the same way. As, as uh, Prime Minister Abbott also felt. And it was through Prime Minister Abbott when Narendra and I were unable to visit each other's countries as we were seeking to progress our economic partnership. I would say, Narendra, I'd love to come. And he says, well, if you come, we must put on a magnificent feast and, and celebration and, and, uh, and COVID will prevent us from doing that. And as much as Jenny and I wanted to go, um, that was the honour and respect, not to me, but he wanted to pay you Australia, but also as friends. And so I was pleased that I was able to appoint Tony Abbott to go and be our go between as we worked together, and of course, Dan Tien, who did the same thing as the industry, as the trade minister, going backwards and forwards. But Narendra and I share a view about a free and open Indo-Pacific. We share a view about the importance of a rules-based order in our world, and that free peoples in India and Australia, as well as in Japan and so many other countries in our region, need to ensure that that freedom prevails. And we're very strong about it. And we're working closely together. We work closely together on economic issues. We work closely together on COVID issues and humanitarian support. We work closely together on security issues. We want to see both the Australian and the Indian economies become very successful and become even more entrenched with one another. And that presents enormous opportunities here in Australia, as well as in India. And that will continue by that partnership forever expanding. And that's why I was so pleased that prior to us going into the election, we were able to complete the Australia-India Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement. This was a significant agreement. I have been there with Narendra as we are working through the RCEP deal, which was with all um, the countries of ASEAN and others. And after it was not possible to get everybody into that agreement, particularly India, we began the work with India to ensure that Australia and India could at least go forward. And I found a very willing and cooperative and excited partner in Prime Minister Modi. And so he and I uh, continued to task our ministers to ensure they kept working to get this deal in place. And this arrangement removes tariffs on 85% of Australian exports to India, and it rises to 91% within just 10 years. We're investing in 280 million in supporting this relationship, which includes 35.7 million to support cooperation on research, production, and commercialization of clean technologies, critical minerals, and energy. 25 million to deepen our space cooperation, and 28 million to launch the Centre for Australia-India Relations. We have a comprehensive strategic partnership that we have completed. All of this says that we're on the same journey together. And we often speak about the students who come to India, from India to Australia. And Red is always so pleased about the welcome and the reception and the support that is provided, and particularly during COVID, when students were here and are not unable to return to their families and the care and support that the local community here, the Hindu community here in Australia, were able to provide. And again, I want to thank you for doing that. I'm sure he would want me to do that on his behalf as well. So we have much to continue to achieve here in our relationship. But importantly for the community here, as it continues to grow and continues to see the economic opportunities expand here, where you've chosen to make your home over a very long period of time. We want to support the community organisations that make this happen. Because that is the fabric of Australia, the community organisations, whether it's the Hindu Council or many other groups that form our communities across Australia. That's what makes Australia strong. That's when a pandemic or a flood or a fire or an economic shock or something like that hits our country. We fall back on the love and support and the networks of community that exist right here in Parramatta or elsewhere around the country. And we want to continue to invest in those communities. 
And that's why today I'm just announcing that a re-elected Morrison government will provide the Hindu Council in Australia with $250,000 for much needed upgrades to their kitchen and dining room, which will help to expand the Karma Kitchen program. <laughs> serving up freshly cooked vegetarian meals to the homeless, to the elderly and those in need. And since the initiative began, you've distributed some 20,000 meals. We've <laughs> made our blankets in the provided temporary accommodation to those in need and supported families across Sydney throughout the pandemic. The very least we could do is ensure that we continue to partner with you. And I want to thank all those who contribute so generously to that program. This is a partnership. This isn't just that government, this is about you. This is about your organisation, your community, and what you're able to achieve. Another thing that's very important to you is the freedom of faith in this country. Regardless of what that faith is, people have come to this country for those freedoms and for those liberties. And I know how important faith is to people regardless of what that faith is. I have no doubt that it's helped sustain you as a community during these difficult years and well beyond that, and will continue to do so into the future. It is a foundation for family. It is a foundation for your own personal and spiritual well-being. This is incredibly important for who you are, the community that you're part of and that you're building. And we understand how hurtful it can be to see cultural symbols used by extremist groups as symbols of hate. Respect, tolerance and understanding and, and, and values are values that we must promote and preserve in Australia. Now we know that some state governments have taken action to, to ban the use of hate symbols and, and we support that. However, it must be practical. It must be sensible. And it's good to see that appropriate exemptions are provided for Hindus, Buddhists, and Jains. This is practical. <laughs> Respecting each other's faith comes from seeking to understand each other's faith and understanding what these symbols mean and what they don't mean and enable um, a practical society. That's what a multicultural society is. It's one that seeks to understand each other and respect each other. And uh, the word tolerance is important. But it is the product, I think, of respect. It is the product of understanding. It is the product of love for one another as Australians and, uh, and the sort of country and society that we wish to be. So as a government, these are things that we feel very passionate about. And I know you do too. They're things that we want to continue to preserve because I know that's what will sustain your community. There are many other issues that I know we'll probably discuss with Alex when we get to the questions, whether the issues of visas or, or how we can continue to support services in aged care as ageing communities require often quite specific services, in particular ethnic groups and language groups. And their challenges within the broader aged care system. And these are things we're also committed to as well. So I want to thank you all for coming here this evening. I want to thank you for your interest. But most of all, I want to thank you for your faithfulness as a community, one to each other, and above all, your great faith in Australia. Thank you all. Very much. Fiji Times. We were the Times.